Well, hello. We are here today with Faith to talk about her books and uh, how wonderful they are. Well, I think so, anyways. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're currently working on. Um, right now, I'm not actually, uh, well, I'm still in the brooding phase on my next book. Uh -huh. I'm going to do uh, the third book in the Falking, um, but I haven't actually... Well, I started putting stuff down, but not seriously. Oh. We're getting there. Yeah. Okay. So, book three, is it going to be as dramatic as book one? Um, I would say so, yeah. Um, book two is, I would say, a little faster and darker than book one. Uh -huh. And book three will at least be that fast and dark <laughs> not worse but oh boy we'll see yeah oh dear well that should be interesting it's, it's hard to plan that in advance you know it kind of just sort of happens while you write it mm -hmm. you know one way or the other mm -hmm. do you yeah. do any planning in advance or is this just no nope. I'm, I'm really in fact horrible at that no i i just start and see what happens pretty much ah uh, yes i am right there with you it is a yeah Process. People seem to fall into two categories on that. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Okay, so how did you come up with this idea? Because the interdimensional beings are quite interesting. Um, that's a good question. It, it kind of came from a lot of different directions. Um, mm -hmm. Originally, I, I wrote this little short story, very short, like, I don't know, two, three thousand words. Mm -hmm. And it's about it's called pattern sense and it's about Melazon and her powers of, you know, little things she's able to do through knitting. Mm -hmm. And it's just a simple little story and it's how she deals with, uh, oh, then dumping her basically. Yeah. And it's this little story. And one day it kind of, I looked at it and it kind of appeared in my head as a whole full blown book. And so <laughs> I, I, I took the story and I kind of, well, I pretty much tossed them. I mean, it's kind of in the book, but not really. There's a whole lot more to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just started writing this thing, but I would say it's probably pretty heavily influenced by, um, oh, I don't know, fairy tales, um, like, um, you know, Norse, Norse um, literature, you know, like the yeah. Rosetta and the Poetic Edda and that kind of stuff. You noticed um, a bit of that. Lots and lots of myths and legends. I just, I love that stuff. Um, so it all kind of got in there. But the idea about the, the felking and the gate and all that, I have absolutely no idea where that came from. Really. <laughs> I, I'm like, it just kind of it just appeared yeah. one day. Yeah. Well, I could think of worse things. So how much yeah. research on the mythology did you do? Because there's a uh, lot in there that I had forgotten about. Oh, uh, well. I guess I've been sort of reading and studying that stuff for a really long time. And I, I guess it's all in what I call the soup pot. You know, it's just all uh -huh. kind of in there. So I suppose there were probably a few little things that I looked up just to get the details of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I knew a lot of that. And it's not, I wouldn't call, you know, the stuff I am in there exactly the scholarly. I kind of <laughs> took what I remembered and kind of went with it. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't, it's not all like, you know, uh, perfectly matches the thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's all very interesting. Now, here's a word question for you. Why math? Um, I don't know. There's like a, I don't know. It just occurred to me like a, the name of an entity or a god or something. Yeah, I like it. Um, it's just outside of the context of, you know, like the short version of mathematics. It's a mm -hmm. kind of a cool word. I just, I don't know. I just threw it in there and it kind of stuck. <laughs> I like it. It brings up all sorts of questions that I have yet to answer because I haven't finished the book yet, but I'm Good. very interested. Yeah. If you're in the brooding stage, does that mean you're sort of having it out with your characters? Um, no, it's it's kind of like where it all starts to come together. Like I start having ideas and, and this is going to happen and that's going to happen. It, it's sort of where I where I get to when I'm ready to start. At some mm -hmm. point, it'll just get to the point where I'm going to sit down and just it's going to start flowing. It just hasn't gotten to that yet. I, uh -huh. I suppose some people might call this writer's block, but I don't really <laughs> believe in writer's block. It's no. kind of like when it's ready to do whatever, then it'll be ready. Okay. And then you just sit down and out comes the story. Yeah. Well, you know, not all at once, but. Wow. Well, yeah, I, I wish. Yeah. No kidding, huh? 
<laughs> I don't I don't have time to do that, but that would be most wonderful if I if we could all manage to just sit down and uh, poof. Yeah, right. I <laughs> know. Oh wow. So, um, what's your least favorite part of this whole writing process? And I include the publishing process in there because it can be quite difficult. Um, um, I don't know, probably sales and marketing, or, or are you talking about just the writing of it? Oh, whichever. Um, least favorite part. Well, I'm one of these freaks that kind of likes editing. Mm-hmm. I, I love to edit. Um, <laughs> And it's it's actually easier than than coming out with it originally, you know, because once it's out there and it's all down, then you can go tinker with it, you know, till <laughs> till the cows come home. But um, I don't know, maybe um, fi- you know, finishing it because mm. deciding that it's when it's finished, because I'm a I'm a, a chronic tinkerer, and so I'll finish <laughs> that thing, but I'll be going back, and there's just no end to the madness, really, you know, wow. making changes to it so I, putting it aside and actually being done with it I think is the hardest part yeah I can understand that yeah uh, making sure that it's completely done so you tinker do you have uh, a specific tinker then beta read then tinker then edit process or do you just um well I have I have a very very good editor mm-hmm. and at some point you know, when I'm done kind of polishing it to the, to the greatest extent that I can. Mm -hmm. Um, and and we're talking, you know, a lot of rewrites. I, I, it takes me a while. I don't, you know, I hear about people who can write books in like, you know, three or six months. And I'm like, how do you do this? (laughs) I I can't, but anyway, when I, when I'm done kind of polishing it and I feel kind of safe, you know, I'll, Mm -hmm. I'll send it to her and, um, she is exceedingly thorough. She, ah. she goes through it and she's very good um and then you know obviously while I'm working on her changes it goes back and forth and back and forth. that's like the ultimate tinkering exercise mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Um, I love good editors they're so helpful <laughs> oh yeah really and and it's really scary when you first get the get the thing back from them and you open it up and it's just like look somebody it's like oh. a fest you know it's just it's splattered on <laughs> moment <laughs> of it's like, oh my panic. god yeah. <laughs> it's never as bad once you start to get into it it's always really scary opening that thing up initially Mm -hmm. absolutely i that oh those those changes oh (laughs) absolutely all right i know oh dear so how many so you've got the the felking series is there another series out there because uh your website seems to have more than just this yeah, actually, the the first series I wrote is the Chronicles of Eolirin. That's and, the one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the other one. And there's four, well, there's really five books in that. There's four books that kind of follow a timeline. They're, they're pretty much standalone. Um, mm-hmm. You don't have to have read, you know, them to, to read them. But mm-hmm. And then there's another one that's a novella that takes place in that world, but just with oh. different characters. Yeah, and that uh-huh. one's completely standalone. So, so I have it up as book five, but Amazon won't let me put up a novella as part of a series. So it kind of just sits out there, kind of really? lonely. <laughs> Wait, know. Amazon, hold on. Yeah, right. I'm not, yeah, that's yeah. a bit silly. I hadn't realized they didn't let you put novellas up as part of a series. I didn't know that either until I tried to do it, <laughs> huh. and then, they, then I actually went and read the little rules or whatever it is which i had never done and and uh yep they don't they don't put novellas as part of a series well piffle to that yeah it's kind of it's kind of sucky but whatever it's there if you look at the cover it says book five on it yeah so So i showed them yes uh well eventually they'll actually listen to us it just might (laughs) You think that's possible? I, I don't. If we all <laughs> yell loud enough at the exact same time. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to require something amazing. Something. Oh, dear. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the Chronicles of Illyria. Um, Illyrian, yeah. Those, Illyrian. wow, long, kind of a long, sorted history on that. The, the, oh. What those were based on um, was pretty much the first thing I ever wrote years and years and years ago. And it was this huge, enormous thing. And 
it kind of over a long period of time it kind of evolved into these books and what happened was at some point i came up with this character um lorth of ostara and, and he's an assassin and he was raised by a wizard yeah and so he's got some he's kind of packing the the skills of a of a very advanced mm -hmm. wizard yeah he doesn't think of himself as a wizard and he doesn't kind of take it very seriously he just uses these and he uses them in the practice of his art so to speak oh um, dear so he's yeah he's a great character and i don't know where he came from he just showed up one day and ended up kind of driving the entire series i rewrote the thing from the ground up uh -huh. and it, that's actually happened a, a couple few times but when he came along it was a serious deal and so the first book in the series the hunters read is kind of his story like mm -hmm. where he comes on the scene and the other books all have him in it um mm -hmm. but it's kind of like different adventures or different stories within the same world with a lot of the same characters kind of floating through them oh i like it yeah so um did yeah, you find so it difficult what? to character hop from book uh, to book no well, the first book, the first book is just from his point of view. Right. And, but the other books are told from three or four different points of view. And, and ah. um, I think his is one of them and all but one, but he's still in the story. He just doesn't yeah. have his own point of view on it. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I kind of like doing that, seeing it from the, seeing things from the points of view of different characters. I love doing that. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, yeah. Do you plan your characters out at all if you don't plan your story? Um, well, part of, part of the, the brooding process <laughs> where, where I kind of get to before I'm ready to start it is I kind of decide who's going to be telling it. Uh -huh. um, and usually that comes up pretty quickly. Like It's pretty clear mm -hmm. um, how that's going to happen. And But it, a lot of... A lot of moving and shifting around happens, like like who's going to start it, kind of a thing. Um, yeah. Who's the focus? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you like to edit out of your books? What do I like to edit out of my books? Um, well, like a lot of writers, there tend to be just way too many words, you know, like, like mm -hmm. uh, not, not just purple prose, but you use too many words to say something that could be written simply. <laughs> um, that, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And another tendency I have, and my editor um, originally pointed this out to me, and, and it's, it's weird because it's kind of a personality thing, is I, I tend to be kind of um, elusive and vague about things, like, oh. <laughs> like I'll write along something and it's it's just it sounds really good but it's kind of vague and it's not really saying a damn thing and, and she she really has brought my attention to that so I usually have to go through and clean that kind of stuff up oh oh yeah. dear yes I mean well I could be a mysterious foreshadowing for something in the future yeah you know I, I have all these theories but <laughs> but um, but my editor comes down and says, I have no fucking idea what this means. Maybe we could, you know, and so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, editors are, um, I guess, they're, they're sort of the rule on that one. If they have no idea what's going on, you should probably fix it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of, I kind of go with her, uh, go with her on most things, but particularly things like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the feeling. Alrighty, talking sort of mm, tangentially to your writing, is there a story out there that you wish you had written? And this could be book form, or television form, or radio drama form, or whatever suits your fancy. Um, a book that I wish I had written. Um, I would have a really hard time answering that because I've I've kind of been I've been writing them. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean. It would have to be a completely different thing. Well, actually, you're welcome there's, there's... to steal someone else's work if you like. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't do that. <laughs> there's there's, a, there's a, a short story I wrote, and um, it's it's an interesting. I've I've had a lot of comments from um, readers that they wished it was a book, 
Mm-hmm. And somewhere in my head, it is a book. And I, and one of these days, I'm going to write that sucker. And that's the closest thing I have to answer that question. Aha. Uh-huh. Is there a particular uh, theme to this short story? Something? Um, well, it's about it's about a warrior who has um, like powers. Um, he's got powers over the earth. Ooh. You know, like all earth kind of related things, like um, you know, earthquakes and. Uh-huh. Uh, mountains and things like that um and he he discovers this through the death of his mother um and there's this this whole thing around this um like she was basically murdered um because of his powers and he finds out about him just kind of um well by accident really and it's um there's a lot there but it's basically mm-hmm. a, you know a story about a warrior who you know runs into the powers that be and has to discover his you know who he is and, and what he is to not only mm-hmm. avenge his mother but to kind of be who he is you know to carry on the legacy kind of thing it's called earth blood and yeah one of these days i'm gonna write a book out of that sucker because i think yeah there's, there's absolutely so there. you could do a lot with that yeah well there's a lot more to it that i you know that i'm kind of trying to pick through and figure out which details to talk about or whatever because there's a lot of little details in there it's uh-huh, so. uh-huh. fleshing out the story Ooh. Mm-hmm. well i'll put that on a list of upcoming projects that i need to look out for because that sounds lovely <laughs> don't hold your breath but yeah that'd be good <laughs> <laughs> oh well you'll get there eventually yeah i will and who knows with all of the uh weird Netflix and Amazon things, maybe it'll get picked up to be an original series, which would be very cool. Ooh, yeah, I saw a, a trailer just originally for the Witcher series coming up. And yeah, I'm not like- actually familiar with the Witcher series. I feel like I should be, but I'm not. Oh, I, there are all kinds of books I feel like I should have read already that I haven't, so I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is, is this one I should definitely pick up? Um... Well, I love them. I'm I've, I'm done with the series. Well, I'm on the very last one now, um, mm-hmm. Season of Storms, I think it's called. And I think it's a, like a standalone thing that isn't actually part of the series. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's there. So I'm going to I'm I've just started that. But yeah, it's, it's fantastic. If you're into um, it's kind of gothic, it's got this sort of Eastern European feel to it. And if you're oh. into monsters and monster hunters, and fairy tales he kind of has a way of weaving in um fairy tales um Mm -hmm. into it that's very interesting um and it's it's pretty kind of grim darkish in places it's it's pretty nasty like war scenes and the things that happen Mm -hmm. to people and stuff so yeah it's it's dark and kind of kind of interesting and and the main character Geralt of Rivia is awesome he's like one of my (laughs) my favorite protagonists yeah he's great okay Um, well kind of tormented Oh, you know, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, well, those, those are always the best main characters if they're a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Agree. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So, talking related to the writing process, but not actually writing, uh, is what's the best money you ever spent as a writer? The best money I ever spent? Well, my editor would probably be the top of that list. She sounds wonderful. She is. She she's um, you know, it, it cost me a bloody fortune, but it's worth uh, every penny. Yeah. Um and that and recently I just purchased I just discovered Vellum. I'm not a it's only available on Mac and I'm not a Mac user, so I, I heard about it just somebody was talking about it on the internet and I, I read a a series or started reading a series of books that was done in it and I, I had been thinking about kind of doing it anyway because I've heard mm-hmm. amazing things about it anyway it's a little pricey and I and I bought it and I'm reformatting all my books on it and that oh, would wow. probably be number two on the list of things yeah I'm not familiar with vellum I mean I'm I've heard of it but I don't know how it works it is a seriously slick piece of software I'm telling you what for formatting your books it has all these and it does everything for you you just load up a, a docx file and it sets up your table of contents and it puts little the symbols in and you have different styles oh, you can choose and it's easy cool. it's just beautiful um cool. yeah if you i had to i'm like 
I only, you know, I'm a kind of a PC rat from way back. So I had to, <laughs> to get onto a uh, Mac and cloud. They got this cool, this cool thing where you can, for a small fee, you can log on to their servers and use uh-huh. Mac apps on it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, I love all of the new things that are happening out there for us author types. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some amazing stuff out there. And then there are some not-so-good things. Like, the- <laughs> Well, you're going to get one with the other, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that, that seems to be how software works. I'm still watching people who say, yeah, we're going to turn AI into a songwriting, novel-writing machine. I'm thinking... It's probably not a great idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Well, uh, there's also the um, switch for self-publishing and indie publishers and indie authors to be just as capable at the uh, marketing scheme as the traditional publishing world. Oh yeah, some some better at it in, in a lot of cases because they they don't have the they don't have the, the overhead and the big, great big thing to mm-hmm. move around. It's, you know, one man shop. You can move around a system like a spider. You can, you can do a lot. Yeah. yeah. What do you think is the best way for managing that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, like with most things, I completely wing it with that. I mean, I'm, I'm on the things that I like. I, you know, I use them. I kind of like doing that stuff. I love doing uh, like artwork for banners and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah promotion banners and, and stuff um and i like you know interacting with readers and doing those things out there i'm not you know like this incredible book market or anything but um oh, yeah i wish we all were that would make things so much easier yeah and and i always pretty much assume that everybody else is better at it than i am <laughs> yeah. but it's, uh, it's, it's, when I first started out, the whole sales and marketing side absolutely flipping terrified me. It's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that shit. I don't want to do that. But once I started to get into it, you know, during the, you know, the whole, well, I was before self-publishing, but, but really kind of when I decided I might want to look into that, um, I found out that it was really kind of cool. And I think the geek in me came to the rescue on that. Yeah. I, just, I loved prowling around and all that stuff. Oh, boy. Do you see any changes happening for this, uh, I guess, marketing method do you, that you think are interesting? Um, what, for me? Well, yeah, just in general. No, I, you know, it's kind of, kind of, it's again, it's a figuring out as I go along thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I go with the things that interest me and the things that are fun and the things that are cool. I don't force myself to do anything because it's yeah. what everybody's supposed to do. You know, I don't really do well with that. Um, I but, can understand. Yeah, but <laughs> sometimes... You know, as I'm going along, I'll think, you know what? I think I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to try that. Mm-hmm. And something will come up, and I'll go try something new. So I'm always kind of experimenting, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a nonlinear approach. <laughs> <laughs> do you do much, much research into that sort of a thing? Uh, no, not just, really. Just go for it. I mean, there's all kinds of blogs and articles on, you know, how to sell your book using social networking. And I, I think, you know... Back in whenever, I probably read a couple of those, but a lot of it's just common sense mm-hmm. um, once you start to get into it. Yeah, I, yeah. I would probably agree with that. Yeah. Although some of these things make no sense whatsoever, so I won't even bother. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. There, there, are, there are a lot of things I don't bother with. But, you know, it, the thing is, it's like you can't be on everything because no one got that much time. Oh, gosh. You know, because oh. it's such a time suck, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to move back into your writing. Your character names are lovely. How did you come up with them? Um, well, let's see. Um, in the in in the Felking books, um, it's a lot of it's Scandinavian. A lot of mm-hmm. it's based on sort of myth- mythology and, and those kinds of things. <laughs> um, kind of Tolkien-esque kind of <laughs> names you know so, some of them um some of them i made up some of them i are actual you know you can go online and type in uh you know scandinavian names for men or something you mm-hmm. know and you can find all kinds of web- websites with all kinds of cool names and things on it and um just reference sites that have you know entire lists of terms from norse mythology and that kind of stuff I um, love those websites. Oh I yeah, hours so on I, those websites. I love. I do too. So I go and prowl around in those things, and I I get a lot of ideas from mm-hmm. that. 
Yeah. And what about your um, your other series? Because that is not a name I'm familiar with, and I don't think I can pronounce it. No, I completely made it up. Um, <laughs> no, the other series, again, just stuff I made up. I have whole, <laughs> like, lists and lists full of names. If something occurs to me, I'll write it down. Yeah, just I kind of keep track of it. So, so when I'm looking for a name for somebody, i got something I can kind of scroll down and, you know, come up with that sounds good. Oh, what fun. Yeah, I... I wish I had those lists, but I seem to have um, lost a bunch of mine, and I don't know what happened. So now my names are mostly taken from websites. Yeah, no, well, that works too. I, I've done quite a bit of that. Just um, or you can take something that sounds cool and kind of modify it a little bit, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So for people trying to get into the writing world, do you have any? advice for them any traps that they should avoid um yeah getting addicted to the internet that's a trap you should avoid <laughs> if i that's if i so could hard. somehow reclaim all the time i've wasted fucking around on the internet um, <laughs> a lot more things would get done i'm sure just you know i think that might be a product of this age i don't know if that's it is because, writers. because when I started out, there was no internet, and there were other things, obviously, to get mm-hmm. distracted and, and screwed up by. But um, what, the other thing I think can stop a lot of writers in this age or whenever is just being intimidated by the whole thing, mm-hmm. um, especially if you're looking at wanting to get published or, or anything. But um, particularly now, the thing I imagine if you're just starting out can seem unbelievably daunting because there's just so much and it's all at your fingertips you know but you can't mm-hmm. possibly you know absorb or, or deal with all of it um i would say don't fall into the trap of letting that knock you down mm-hmm. just start writing and yeah. don't worry about all that shit because you will get caught up in it and it will devour you <laughs> you know i <laughs> yeah. yep mm-hmm. yeah I've been there actually i'm yeah. still there trying to figure out this yeah, whole yeah. Thing. so am i that's how i know what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> personal experience oh dear oh dear okay so uh, do you have any other projects planned behind besides the book three or are you a one book at a time type um well part of why i haven't started is because i'm always doing little side projects like i took an excerpt from um from book two and i made a novella out of it i completely Uh rewrote thing and, and put that out sometimes i'll just have an idea like that and i'll spend some time doing stuff like that oh, what fun. um yeah little things and and you know i spent a lot of time tinkering around with my website and mm-hmm. um things like that and, and i kind of think of those kind of like the website stuff as sort of a project because it's like a work in progress it's mm-hmm. just always i'm always doing stuff out there um so aside from just the little things that come up not really. And, you know, I mean, I, I had an idea of writing a whole series of like short books, kind of Earth Blood being one of them, turning oh. that story into a book um, that had to do with, um, you know, like the other world and witches and, and those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, people with powers and stuff. And I have ideas for several books, but uh, I've mm-hmm. not written any of that down. But it's sometime at some point in my life that's probably going to I'm going to start that. Yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of fun with this, and you're oh, working. Yeah. Oh do you, yeah. Do you have the same like? Do you have base your because you've got the uh, the Falcon is sort of the Scandinavian you said, and with the Norse mytho- Norse mythology. Norse mythology, yeah. Work. And <laughs> so I know what you meant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, tongue. It's it's what is today Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so um, how much do you base your worlds off of reality? Uh, as little as possible. <laughs> but but I have this theory that there need to be there needs to be some aspects of reality, like things that we can at least relate to. Just mm-hmm. so, otherwise, it's really hard to ground people in your story because they don't have anything to kind of latch onto that they're familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I don't, I very rarely write stories based on, say, like something that happened to me or something that's going on in the world, you know, politically, or I kind of avoid that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's not to say that some of it might creep in there occasionally, just subconsciously. Yeah. But well, I think I think we're all guilty of that. Well, yeah, I don't think you can avoid it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, at this point, I would say avoiding anything world event political is gonna probably suit you pretty well. Most people. Yeah. Are. <laughs> yeah. Considering. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I think I think it's the world is so weird enough. Apocalyptic, yeah. Uh, yep, <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, um, in the indie author world, do you have a favorite author that you like, or an underappreciated novel that you would like to spread the word on? Um, well, I've read a lot of stuff. You know, I, I'm gonna mention something that I've been reading just recently that's, that's kind of fresh in my mind is um, The Ashen Levels by C.O. Oh, yeah, those are great. They are. Have you read them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just did a book review on them, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago. Oh, it was really yeah, good. Right. I saw that float by. Um, I, I'm only, I'm reading them one at a time. I'm through the second mm-hmm. one now, about to start the third, but um. Yeah, I love those books. They're yeah. quite good. They there's are. so many there's so many really good stories out there in the indie world and I just keep reading a bunch of them and saying, Oh, how can how can there be so many good people out there? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's oh, good fun. And the T B R list never ends. <laughs> I know it. Yeah, that, that's the curse of us all, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, is there anything else you would like to add or to say that could be writing related or not? Um, no, just thank you very much for having me. Well, um, thanks for coming on. It was good fun talking with you. And now I know a whole lot more about your series. Good. That's good. Yes. Although mm-hmm. no spoilers because I'm still reading them. So. Okay. <laughs> I will Although, okay, I do have to ask one question. Othin and Melisande, do they ever actually talk to one another in book one? Um, <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Not a spoiler, but yes. Is that okay, mean you crazy? Good. <laughs> so I keep waiting, like, okay, this is um, kind of important, and I need crazy. them to actually interact. I imagine, I imagine that as long as I dragged it out, that it would really piss readers off. It, yeah. it would piss me off. I'd be like, are you kidding me? Uh-huh. Yeah. No, uh-huh. don't worry. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Thank you. I appreciate the help. Now I can stop stressing out quite so much. <laughs> yeah, well, if I'd been a real jerk, I would just let you keep stressing out, but I couldn't do that. Oh, so. oh thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you must be right about the point where that's driving you nuts. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It really is. <laughs> I get so invested in these stories and like, the characters, sometimes they drive me crazy. Yeah, oh yeah. And, and of course it's all the author's fault, naturally. But um, <laughs> I won't blame you too much until the well, book you know, comes out. It isn't all the author's fault, because you know how it is. Characters have a life of their own and they do things that I wouldn't do. Yes. So, you know, it's a matter of kind of letting them do it. That's <laughs> so that it's true. Really annoying. That's <laughs> true. I think I think authors are just easier to blame than characters. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> it wouldn't be wrong, probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It was good fun talking with you. Yes, thank you, too.